So let's look at a simplified example of water supply modeling. In this case, we're going to consider having a reservoir somewhere, a dammed up river or a lake or some place where water has been accumulated and um, is being used as a supply of water for some municipality. Um, and in a case like this, we have a very simple, it's basically a budget that we're going to work on, that we're going to consider how much water is in the reservoir, which is something we call storage. And that storage is going to be a volume. Usually that volume is going to be something measured. A volume might be measured in cubic meters. And in this case, we're going to actually talk about a million cubic meters. Million meters cubed, or MCM, a million cubic meters. Okay, so that's the term we'll use here, is a million cubic meters. So that's a, a large amount of water that we're dealing with. And our budget basically says that we're going to have things that are flowing in, inputs to our reservoir, and outputs to our reservoir. And it's simply a matter of keeping track of those inputs and outputs, that we're going to have a change in our storage, and that change in the storage is going to depend on the inputs minus the outputs. And then what we can think about is if we care about how much storage we have at any one time, the storage later is going to be equal to the storage earlier plus that change in storage. It's the other way that we can kind of look at it, that we basically change the storage by adding the inputs and outputs. In other words, our storage later is equal to the storage earlier plus my inputs minus my outputs. And again, it's as simple as maybe managing money or some other thing along that line. You're basically keeping track of what goes in and what goes out. What makes a problem like this difficult is knowing what those numbers are. How do you know what the numbers are? How do you know how much stuff people are going to use? How do you know what the inputs are going to be? And generally, we don't know what those inputs are ahead of time, but what we need to do is we can use historical information to make an estimate of what we expect to happen. We can go back and do an average of what's happened over past years, five years or ten year time frame, and gather that information, or we can actually um, and we can do the same thing with our outputs, what people have used, or make estimates. Or we could even limit that. If we're talking about how much gets used, we can actually sort of set a certain amount that we're actually going to use and disperse. So in a simple system like this, well, I might consider, for example, that the inputs might simply be precipitation, that we're able to measure how much rain is falling off and or running off input from precipitation as a result of um, measurements that we've seen in the past. And we might also talk about use. Notice the precipitation is an input and the use is an output. And if I actually want to model my water supply to see how much water I am going to have over a period of time, I simply I need to know how much water I'm starting with. So let's start with a certain water amount here. We'll say we have a storage of 1,000 mcm. Okay, we'll start with a certain storage. Now it's important in most of those cases that there's going to be some level, a maximum level of storage, at which point we're overflowing the reservoir, we can no longer hold any more water. And there's also going to be some sort of minimum level of storage, and this is what we call dead volume, or dead storage, which is a level at which the water, it's either below our ability to draw the water out, or it's below some sort of safe level for the, the uh, wildlife or the aquatic vegetation or whatever might be there. It's some level at which we can no longer, even though there is water there, we can no longer go below that level. And obviously we want to try to avoid reaching that dead volume. So how do we go about doing this? Again, it's simply a matter of accounting. I can look, for example, in the month of June, let's assume that it's at the end of the month of May and here's our initial storage that we have, and we can go and look. And compared to, if we see here, we have a value of 117 million cubic meters that we estimate are going to flow in based on history of what happens in June, precipitation in June. So we can add our 117 MCM. 
but at the same time, we're expecting that there's quite a bit of use that's occurring at this time from the nearby municipality of 142 minus 142 million cubic meters. Notice that net amount, let me write that here, minus 142 million cubic meters. Notice that net amount is going to result in us having less storage over our time period. So let's see here, that's uh, seven minus two is going to be, let's see here, a thousand, one, one, seven, seven minus two is gonna be five, and then we get 11 minus four is seven, and then I believe that's gonna give us around 975 MCM. And that's gonna be our storage at the end of June. Okay, and notice that is, again, a reduction in the amount of storage. Now, we may not know exactly what that tra uh, translates to in the height of the reservoir, but we do know that volume. Similarly, if we want to keep going with this process, and this is something that is easily implemented on something like a spreadsheet, we can do the same thing. In July, we might expect a larger amount of rain. Looking at the value here, I see 158 million cubic meters, and then we use 138 million cubic meters. Perhaps there are fewer people historically, people go on vacation or something along those lines, or we have reasons to believe that we're going to use a little bit less. And in this case, you'll notice the net there is an addition of about 20, and we end up with 995 million cubic meters. And that would be our storage for the month of July. So as you can see, it's simply a matter of adding and subtracting these pieces. The difficult part of this is making the, approx the, the appropriate estimations for these values or gaining these values, either from history, um, well, generally from history. Um, the other thing that can be difficult is that there are other pieces that balance. It isn't always as simple as precipitation or just the use. There might be other things that might occur. For example, evaporation particularly in the hot summer months, you're going to have a fair amount of evaporation. That evaporation is going to depend on the surface area of your reservoir, which will depend in turn on how much storage you have. So it can get fairly complex fairly quickly in making estimates on things like evaporation. Similarly, things like groundwater exchange and or other uses might complicate that system a little bit. However, you can do some simple water supply modeling using addition and subtraction and this relationship between storage, input, and output.